The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright, in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. As a follow-up to last week's announcement, Bishop Burbage had a successful surgery and is starting his recovery, so please continue to pray for him that the surgeons were able to take everything out that needed to be taken out of the cancer and that he is able to recover well and return to his duties in several weeks. This first week of Advent reminds us that Christmas is coming soon, of that, in a way, it's kind of just around the corner, that we all have our hopes and aspirations for Christmas. These four weeks of Advent are our annual season of waiting and hope for Christ. The season of Advent waiting reminds us that everything is not quite right with our world. That our world is somehow broken and needs fixing. That the world is broken because it does not pay attention to God. Does not put God first. Does not put Jesus first. The only way to fix our broken world is to mend or repair it with Christ. That Christ is the solution to our broken world. The prophet Jeremiah we heard from in our first reading today was also living in a broken world. In fact, he lived in pretty desperate times. That was during his time that he witnessed the Babylonians putting Jerusalem under siege for 18 months and then finally burning and destroying the city, destroying the temple of God there in Jerusalem that he escaped only with some of his fellow people down to Egypt. Yet despite all of this destruction, all of this chaos, perhaps all the despair that the Jerusalem people were encountering in those times, he was hopeful. And he goes and he gives the prophecies of God, proclaims to his fellow Jews that the Lord will fulfill the promise he had made, the promise he had made to David, that promise that There would be a branch or shoot that will do what is right and just in the land. A shoot that will shoot up, a branch that will shoot up from David, following King David's line. That Jeremiah believed that God will fulfill his promise to provide this offspring for King David. That King David had been king centuries before Jeremiah. And it was in Jeremiah's time that he witnessed the end of the line of David. The end of his kingship, ruling there in the kingdom of Judah. That the Jews no longer had that king. But Jeremiah still goes and gives this prophecy of that there is going to be this king. That there will be the coming king of David. That this line is not ended. Then he also goes and points out that the city of Jerusalem will be rebuilt. That it will be a glorious city again. That it will be called, the Lord is our justice. That very often the prophets go and refer to this glorious Jerusalem. And by it, they're foretelling the future of the church. 
that they go and foretell the coming of Christ, the Messiah, our King and Savior, as we celebrated last week. And they also go and point to the future, point to the heavenly kingdom, to the body of Christ, to the church that we are still today. That Jeremiah saw the answer to the chaos of his time in the prophecies of God, in the coming of the Messiah. And our future home would be the church. That Jeremiah looked to the future to Christ. And we too, during Advent, look to the future. That during this early part of Advent, our liturgy directs us to look forward to the second coming of Christ. That Jesus talks about his second coming in today's gospel. That while God might appear to be absent or silent, somehow all of these things are held in divine purpose, which will ultimately win through. That the reference to the coming of Jesus as the Son of Man harkens back to the readings we heard from Daniel not that long ago. That we go and hear that Jesus will come with all of his saints, the communion of saints that unites the church on earth, with all those who have gone before us to the Lord, and with all those holy ones who lived before his coming, will at last be revealed. That we are already encountered this union today when we receive the Blessed Sacrament at Mass. That we are united to Christ with his real presence there in the Blessed Sacrament. We are united to the rest of his mystical body. That we're united to each other here to all the Christians, all the Catholics living throughout the world. But we're also united to the saints in heaven, to the church triumphant, as well as the poor souls in purgatory, the church suffering, that we are one body in Christ. And while the basic message is one of comfort and reassurance, the second part of today's gospel, of our gospel today, adopts a more admonitory tone. That believers must be like people expecting visitors, but unsure as to when exactly they will arrive. One could think of before the age of cell phones, of like about 25 years ago or so, of when I was a child, of that you had people make road trips to go visit each other. That you didn't know exactly when that day they would arrive. We didn't get the text message saying, oh, we're about an hour away. No, you just knew that they would arrive at some point in the afternoon or evening. And you'd have that anticipation, that excitement of somebody's coming today. One of our family members, our extended family members is coming today. That going to the door to check when you hear the sound of that car. Are they here now? Have they arrived? This is how we are to be waiting for the coming of Jesus. The time of waiting requires attentiveness and a sharp spiritual sense. That anything that dulls the spirit, debauchery or drunkenness, or can cause it to be distracted, absorption in the cares of life must be avoided. That after describing the cosmic signs before his second coming, Jesus warns us, be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the coming tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. That's what we come to do here at Mass, to prepare ourselves that we do stand before the Son of Man in the Blessed Sacrament. That Jesus says we are to stay awake, that we are to prepare to meet him. So during this Advent, we are prepared not only for Santa Claus coming to town, as he did yesterday at our Christmas market, but above all, we are to prepare for Jesus coming to town. That Jesus says to stay awake and pray. This is really the only one gift, the gift that Jesus is coming to us. And so therefore, then we can make a return gift to Jesus, a return gift of our lives pleasing to him. But the second reading goes and encourage us to prepare our hearts for Jesus during this Advent. That may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, so as to strengthen your hearts, and to be blameless in holiness before God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus. What better gift can we give to Jesus at Christmas than to have lived Advent in union with him? 
what better gift can we give to Jesus at Christmas than to remove from our lives this Advent, anything and everything that keeps us from him. That during Advent, we need to go and make that sacramental confession. Go to receive the sacrament of penance to prepare our souls for the coming of Christ on Christmas Day. That way we are in that state of grace to truly be able to receive him into our hearts. This is something that we priests go and do frequently of receiving the sacrament of penance. That we always hear the confessions. We are making that spiritual journey with you all. We're making so that we can remove everything out of our hearts, out of our lives that does not belong to God. That we go and during this Advent, we can spend more time in prayer. That perhaps we should open up to the Gospels, to the Gospel of Luke that we are reading now this liturgical year. To read it, to spend time in the infancy narratives of Luke or of Matthew, of how Christ was born, of what happened in those events of his nativity, of how does this come and play a role in our lives here and today, 2,000 years later? Of do we have some Advent practices as a family? Do we have an Advent wreath that we have at our table that we come to together at dinner time to light those candles, to say a prayer for that day of Advent? That we have Advent companions from Magnificat to be found on the tables in the back of church that you could have to use for these practices to help us prepare for the coming of Christ, to make a gift of ourselves, of our lives to Christ this coming Christmas. That we want to give Jesus the gift of our lives because just as Jeremiah looked to Jesus as God's promise, we also look to Jesus' advent as God's promise in our lives. That Jeremiah lived in desperate times, and our world now is also broken, but that we know of the darkness that is in our world in so many ways, because it does not pay attention to Christ, does not put him first. That because Jeremiah saw the answer to the chaos of the coming of the Messiah, and that we too know the answer to the chaos of the world, of the coming of our Savior on Christmas Day, of looking forward to his second coming, even though we do not know the hour nor the day, that the only way to fix, to mend our broken world is with Christ, that Christ is the solution to healing our world, to healing all of us, that we not prepare just for Santa Claus coming to town, that we also prepare for Christ coming to town. We prepare to receive Christ this Christmas into our hearts.